Rod Stewart, the world-famous rock songwriter and singer, is about to celebrate his 76th birthday on January 10, 2021. It's unbelievable the man is already 75. His ambitions and energy keep inspiring people all over the world. Here are all the important yet unknown facts that every Rod Stewart fan must know. Born Roderick David Stewart in North London, Rod Stewart was the youngest of five siblings. His parents were Elsie Rebecca Gilbart and Robert Joseph Stewart. His father was of Scottish origin and was a master builder by profession, and Elsie was an English lady who grew up in North London. Rod's parents tied the knot in 1928 and had two daughters and two sons. Rod was born around eight years after the birth of his youngest sibling, precisely when World War II was raging. He was a spoiled kid as he was the youngest of the family. He describes his childhood to be a fantastically happy one. Now a little about his career. Maggie May pushed Rod Stewart's career into high gear with a track heard and celebrated worldwide. It secured the number one position on the US and UK pop singles charts simultaneously, with an album titled Every Picture Tells a Story. The respectful yet witty and self-deprecating lyrics of Maggie May makes an amazing pop masterpiece. It was originally released as a B-side of Reason to Believe. Although in the US, DJs soon became more enamored and that resulted in Maggie May shooting up the charts to number one. It was the second biggest hit of 1971. In 2015, Rod Stewart revealed in an interview with the Wall Street Journal that initially he didn't think a lot about progressing with Maggie May. Before his solo success, Rod Stewart earned acclaim through his work with Jeff Beck, a leading guitarist, and Faces, a rock group. His debut album, entitled An Old Raincoat Won't Ever Let You Down, didn't enjoy massive success. On the other hand, Gasoline Alley made its way to the top 30 of the US album charts and also played a vital role in the groundwork for the album Every Picture Tells a Story. Rod's visit to a jazz fest and losing his virginity In July 1961, Rod and a few mates went to South England to enjoy camping at the then-famous Bolio Jazz Festival. The iconic concert was conducted on the lawns of Lord Montague's magnificent estate. Lord Montague was a huge fan of jazz. Rod Stewart was 16 years old then and gradually emerging out of his beatnik phase, confused whether he should be a mod or not. As you may have guessed by now, it was indeed a transitional period for the aspiring singer. At the time, Rod was more interested in mainstream jazz, not much into modern or Dixieland, but fond of saxophonists like Johnny Dankworth and Tubby Hayes. In the year before, the jazz festival had encountered a riot, so going back to the same show in 1961 was coupled with intrigue. Rod and his companions snuck into the 1961 jazz festival via a huge runoff pipe and finally made their way to a beer tent. It was there Rod first met a woman much older than him. Much later, he could make sense of her sexually predatory behavior. One thing led to another, and they ended up on an unfrequented patch of a nearby lawn. Rod was a virgin then, and he has later confessed all that was on his mind was, this is the time, he better give a splendid performance or be prepared to put up with a bad reputation in the whole of North London. To his surprise, everything was over way too fast in just a few seconds. Was this the story of Maggie May? We believe somewhere there was and probably is a real Maggie May. Has she ever suspected she was Rod Stewart's muse? We'll get to that in a minute, but if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Her name wasn't Maggie May, but the experience he shared with her influenced the writing of the brilliant summer song a decade later. The 75-year-old singer recalls making Maggie May. In 1971, Rod was the lead singer of Faces and also part of Mercury Records as a solo artist. He was all set to record his third album, Every Picture Tells a Story, when he met Martin Quintenton an experienced songwriter and guitarist who was a part of Steamhammer, a blues rock band. They hit it off right away. As he was also in search of a good acoustic musician for the upcoming album, he decided to check out Martin's skills. He invited Martin to his house in Muswell Hill. As they were talking, Martin took out the guitar just like that and started strumming an old Bob Dylan number. Although Rod does not remember clearly, the song was most likely It's All Over Now, Baby Blue. Then he began playing chords to a song he'd written. Rod began to sing along. You might not know this, but that's how Rod works even today. He'll first connect with a guitarist, and only when he hears some lovely chords, he'll start humming and giving words to it and see what comes out. So that's what happened with Maggie May. 
As Martin started playing, Rod started humming a Liverpudlian folk song about a prostitute named Maggie May. The Beatles had included it on Let It Be a year earlier. As he was singing, the image of a hooker came to his mind, followed by the jazz festival he had attended when he was 16. That was again followed by the incident of him losing his virginity. As these memories rushed back, he became more engrossed and started coming up with appropriate lyrics. He said in an interview he still has his black notebook, the one with a red binding down its back that he would use to write lyrics in. His Maggie Mae scribbling took almost 20 pages. And what was unusual about the song lyrics is they appeared more like a narrative than a typical song that circles back, forming a sing-along chorus. Rod Stewart says it's because of his habit of storytelling that the song turned out the way it is. He also shared a surprising fact with his fans. Rod did not use Maggie May in his lyrics, but just Maggie. May had popped up after Maggie in the song's title at some point. But Rod did not write anything down. He merely outlined a vocal sketch of the song mentally, just by humming and tweaking the words here and there to match what Martin was playing. To him, the lyrics were not that essential at the time. Only the feel needed to be in place. Rod also stated that it works the same way for any song he records. Both Rod and Martin kept going on until both of them were satisfied with the product. When he finished, Rod said there was enough there to bring to a recording studio and book a bass and drums and produce it all there. Maggie May did not have commercial potential. At first, Maggie May was not going to be featured on the album. The song was more than five minutes long and did not have a catchy chorus. But as they finished the album, they found they needed one more song. So they added Maggie May since it had already been produced. For the album version, Rod included another 32 second introduction for the song. This bit was titled Henry and was primarily Martin's brainchild. Rod later claimed he too had no idea as to why Martin had named it Henry. When the single hit the market, Mercury put Maggie May on the B-side and reason to believe toward the A-side. And it wasn't until an American-based DJ flipped over the 45 and started playing Maggie May that it began catching attention. Rod and the record company didn't have high hopes originally about the song. Rod was relatively young and not that confident, so he figured it would be wise to listen to those he thought knew better than him. He later confessed that the lesson he learned was that sometimes they're right and sometimes not. And that's how Stewart went on to become a superstar, all thanks to his decision of writing about a long-ago personal experience of losing his virginity. At 74 years and 11 months, music icon Rod Stewart once again made it to the news for beating Paul Simon, the earlier record holder, by just three months with his album You're In My Heart, which is his 10th number one album. What's your favorite Rod Stewart song? Let us know in the comments section. And before you move on, be sure to hit like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Hit the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.